We're here at the Redevelopment Commission April 4th, 2022 meeting. COVID-related room capacity restrictions have been lifted in, in the City of Bloomington facilities. However, out of concern for each other's well-being, masks are recommended for those with health concerns or at particular risk of disease transmission. Free masks are available from city staff. If you're ill or have been exposed to COVID, please participate online. Thank you for your cooperation and welcome back. And with that, we'll move on to the first item of business, which is roll call. Yeah, commissioner's presence, please. I think Deb, I think you're muted. So we can start in the room. Deborah Myers in here. Randy Daffody here. Martha Street here. Cindy Canarney here. Deb, we're doing roll call. Yeah, I don't think she can hear us. Initially, there was no sound for the connection, but now there is. Okay. I'm sorry, Mr. Zodi. Could you point that your connection mic is up toward the. Toward the alcohol? Excuse me. Oh, I cannot. Oh, say something. Okay, Deb, we're doing roll call, so. Nope, I didn't hear that. Uh, I can, uh, Deb Hutton, here. Perfect. All right. Um, staff members present? Uh, John Zobie, uh, hand director. Christina Finley, hand department. Larry Allen, legal. Jeff Underwood, controller. Uh, Ruth Pierce is here for planning. Alex Crowley, economic and sustainable development. Don Griffin, deputy mayor for the city of Bloomington. Awesome. Welcome. Next item is reading of the minutes for March 21st, 2022, and executive summary for March 21st, 2022. Are there any questions from the commissioners? And if not, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, this is Deb Hutton. I will um, mo move to approve the minutes of uh, March 21, 2022, and the executive summary for March 21, 2022. We have a first and a second. Um, vote via roll call, please. Deb Hutton, yes. Deborah Meyerson, yes. Randy Cassidy, yes. Cindy Canarni, yes. Passes unanimously. Next item of business examination of claims for March 18th, 2022, for 1,572,562,36. Are there any questions from the commissioners? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Deborah Meyerson, I'll make a motion to approve the examination of claims for March 18th, 2022. Deb Hutton, I'll second. Have a first and a second. Um, vote via roll call, please. Deb Hutton, yes. Deborah Meyerson, yes. Randy Cassidy, yes. Cindy Canarni, yes. Passes unanimously. Next item of business examination of payroll registers March 25th, 2022, for 34420 87 are there any questions from any of the commissioners? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, this is Deb Hutton. I will I move to approve uh, or uh, the uh, payroll register of March 25, 2022. Deborah Meyerson, I'll second that. We have a first and a second. Uh, vote via roll call, please. Deb Hutton, yes. Deborah Meyerson, yes. Randy Cassidy, yes. Cindy Canarni, yes. Passes unanimously. Uh, next item up on the agenda is report of officers and committees. Is there a director's report? There is, Madam President, uh, good evening, commissioners and members of the public. Um, one item on my report tonight on agenda item C under number six, uh, we are going to ask you to consider uh, the increase of a, um, a emergency home repair amount again. And I want to just provide some context there. You've, we've, we've asked you to do a number of these over the last several months, and um, we think it's important that 
probably later this summer or at a time if the commission feels another time is appropriate to revisit our program guidelines and look at revising those more permanently so that we aren't uh, sort of doing this in a case-by-case uh, -case basis, if you will. We'd like to be a little more consistent. Prices being what they are and work getting done is just more expensive generally, so we think it's time to take a look at those again. So just to let you know when that comes up, that that is something the staff is uh, recommending we do uh, here before the end of the summer. That, that concludes my report, unless there are questions. Any questions from the commissioners? All right, uh, next up is legal report. I have no report, but I'm happy to answer any questions the commissioners may have. Any questions for Mr. Allen? All right, moving on, Treasurer's report. I just want to report that we did uh, upload the uh, annual RDC report to Gateway um, by the deadline, and we will be forwarding that all to you um, for your records, as well as uh, publishing it on the city's website. All right. And submitting to the city council as well. So. Thank you for that. Any questions for Mr. Underwood? If not, moving on to business development updates. Uh, no significant reports, but uh, one, of the, one of the commissioners asked for an update on, um, on the retail spaces in the garage, just generally. So uh, I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, as you know, there, there are uh, spaces at the Trade Sister garage on the north side of the building. It's about 4,500 square feet. That. And then there's a number of spaces on, at the 4th Street Garage facing Walnut, um, and there are about three or four spaces there um, that aren't being used. One is being used by uh, the parking um, services group. So um, we are actually in, in somewhat active discussions for the Trades District space, um, and I'll hopefully bring more information about that at the next meeting. Um, and uh, that would be for the entirety of the space if that were to work out. Um, and so we, we've, we've had some nibbles other than what the group that we're talking to right now. Um, it's kind of a tough commercial moment, you know, as, as all of you know, in the commercial industry, so, or the commercial uh, real estate uh, sector. Um, so, you know, we're, we're really interested in trying to fill the spaces, obviously, and hopefully we, we can get that one filled. The 4th Street one, we have not gotten a lot of uh, recent interest in. We uh, did get a fairly substantial amount of interest a while back. Uh, the economics didn't end up working out for that potential tenant. So that one is a little bit less active right now. Um, certainly we'll bring you updates as we, as we uh, hear about it. My sense is things are maybe starting to pick up a little bit in commercial real estate, but it's not where it needs to be. And, and uh, so it may take some, a little bit of time. All right, any other update? Any questions for Mr. Crowley? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next uh, item of business, new business, resolution 22-18, approval of amendment of construction inspection agreement for improvements along 17th Street between Monroe and Grant Street. Who would like to speak to this resolution? Looks like Neil Copper from Engineering is on. Okay, good evening, Neil Copper, Engineering Department. Um, the Actually, this item and the next item, I'm going to talk about them both together because they're so related, though I understand you may have to vote on them separately. Um, the commission has seen this project uh, on West 17th Street a few times. The biggest update is that uh, we are splitting the construction actually into two separate construction contracts. So there'll be a, a, um, the west end of the project from Monroe to Walnut, which is the bigger piece of it, uh, remains on its current schedule and it's a federally funded project. The east end of the contract from um, Walnut to about Grant Street is about two and a half block long, blocks long. It splits off and becomes a, a locally funded project. Um, there's a number of reasons for that, primarily related to uh, schedules and ensuring that we can still use the federal funds on the project. Um, by splitting off that small eastern piece, we'll be able to, uh, we should be able to start construction right after uh, IU graduation. Um, and finish up before IU home football games start in the fall. Um, but because we are splitting the construction contract, we also need to split our construction inspection contract. So we have a previously executed inspection contract for the project. Uh, we need to track those separately to ensure that we're not 
using federal funds on the part of the job that it no longer has federal funds with it. So the first item here uh, reduces the existing contract, and then the second item opens up a separate new smaller contract for that east end. Uh, I do want to point out, if you've done the math like I have, there is a slight increase overall on the inspection fees because the consultant has to track the two separately uh, instead of tracking it all together. Um, these contracts were approved by the Board of Public Works, um, and I do want to give you just a heads up that the next the next items that the Commission would see for this project are, um, first would be a construction contract for the east end, uh, then would follow a construction contract for the west end, and there's also one more um, design amendment out there for some services that have been added that have not made it into the contract yet. I will pause there and I'm happy to go into uh, more depth on any of that or answer any questions that you have. All right, thank you. Any questions from the commissioners on resolution 22-18? At this point, the scope of work hasn't changed. It's just dividing things up for those funding sources that you described. That's correct. And the, uh, from Deb uh, here um, in Zoom, uh, just clarifying that the um, Walnut to Grant Street local section being taken off the rest of the bigger project is really only three blocks long, four blocks long. That's, yeah, it's much shorter than the rest of the project, yes. Okay, thanks. questions from the commissioners if not I'll entertain a motion for resolution 22-18 so moved by the commission to approve the construction inspections for improvements along 17th Street between Monroe and Grant okay we have a first and a second uh, I need a roll call vote please uh, Deb Hutton, yes. Deborah Meyerson, yes. Randy Cassidy, yes. Cindy Canarni, yes. Passes unanimously. Um, moving on to resolution 22-19. Uh, I'll entertain a motion based on the previous description of this resolution as well. Or does any commissioners have any questions first? All right, if not, I'll entertain a motion for <coughs> resolution 22-19. This is Deb Hutton. I will uh, I, uh, move to approve resolution 2219 as written. Uh, Deborah Meyerson, I'll second. Have a first and a second. Uh, I need a roll call vote, please. Uh, Deb Hutton, yes. Deborah Meyerson, yes. Randy Cassidy, yes. Cindy Canarni, yes. Passes unanimously. Moving on to the next item, resolution 22-20. Confirming. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. No, yeah. Fine. All right. Uh, thank you. Um, I do want to note that I have Cody Toothman and John Hewitt on the on Zoom here, and John particularly will uh, provide a little more detail. But we are asking, as I mentioned before, asking the commission to um, consider uh, the increase of a emergency home repair. This is for a mobile home for a resident here in Bloomington. Um, as you know, the cap is $3,500. Uh, we have cost estimates um, that are uh, coming back at varied amounts, uh, which require us to ask for an increase of $4,500, um, not to exceed $8,000. This is largely for uh, four floor repairs in the uh, sort of main uh, thoroughfare of the, the residence as well as in the kitchen. So I'll turn it over to John Hewitt uh, to say anything else about the uh, bids and documentation that we received uh, before we um, stop. John? Hi, uh, John Hewitt here from the hand department. So um, I had a couple of contractors go out and uh, look at the job, make uh, bids for it. And uh, during that process, one of those contractors uh, retired and <laughs> sent me an email saying that he would no longer be taking uh, or bidding on projects for the city, uh, just doing his own projects, um, which uh, left us with uh, the main bid from uh, Ann Chris, uh, which is Dave, Dave Paget. Um, 
so that's that's where we are with kind of the bidding process on this particular issue. Uh, I, the other contractors that we had at that time um, that wished to bid on our projects uh, declined to bid also. Thanks, John. Let's uh, leave the commission. All right, is there any questions from the commissioners on resolution 22-20? It's needed, correct? I'm sorry. It's needed. They meet all the requirements, mm -hmm. and we, we're down. We're essentially we're just down to a one bid situation based on the circumstances. Yeah, and so we have. You'll see in here we have a Housing Developer Pro, which is a system that we have in the department that sort of okay. is another I, another tool to use. Um, the the floor in this property is uh, the the sort of main hallway, which I described as the really uh, in need of repair, and it's the same material around in the kitchen, so it's makes practical sense to replace all of it at this point, which is making the cost go up, but not doing that would, I think, just destabilize the floor. John can speak a little bit more, but we think it makes practical sense to replace all of it because it's the same material that needs replacing. All right, any other questions from the commissioners? Any comments from the public? All right, I'll entertain a motion on resolution 22-20. I'll make a motion to approve. All right. I'll second that. We have a first and a second. Um, I need a vote via roll call, please. Tim Hutton, yes. Deborah Myers, yes. Randy Cassidy, yes. Cindy Canarney, yes. Resolution 22-20 passes unanimously. Next item of business is resolution 22-20. 2-1, approval of additional funding for an HVAC improvement for the Dimension Mill. Who would like to speak on behalf of this? I can start, and then Larry can sure. clean up the mess I create. Um, so the mill for a long time, uh, so as you know, the Dimension Mill, old building, uh, 100 plus years old, fully renovated by the Redevelopment Commission, uh, inhabited, uh, doing thriving, a lot of great stuff happening in it except for one thing, uh, which is that there is this smell that is going on in uh, two suites. Uh, the one that is uh, occupied by IU Ventures and the one next door, which is Metrostar Suite. And it is a mystery what is causing the smell. We've had a number of players come in, try to analyze it, try to figure out, first of all, is it toxic, and it's not, uh, but, but it's still smelly, and it's, it's, uh, it's just not pleasant. So. Uh, we believe that it is uh, emanating from the floor uh, from a location where there perhaps was some old machinery way back when that just seeped into the ground. Um, nothing really to be done about it. So the only thing you can do to mitigate it is to, get, is to pump the smell out, right, is to ventilate. So uh, this has been going on for a while, we're trying to get to the bottom of it. Um, where we are, back in, in 21, uh, we uh, figured out with HFI that the best thing to do would be to just ventilate it out, uh, had, a, had a, pl a plan in place. You all approved that. I think it was $19,000 or so to do that work. Uh, supply chains have now caused that to become uh, less advantageous than an alternative, which is more expensive by about $6,000. It's a $25,000 uh, total bill. It would be putting two smaller devices, one in each office, which is actually a better solution um, because then they can regulate their own uh, devices. It is more expensive, but uh, this has been a, a real problem. It's going to continue to be a problem. We really want to try to get this done uh, because we want the tenants to stay in those in those suites. So it's not an ideal situation. Larry, I don't know what I've overlooked. I, I would just point out I, one of the reasons why we also wanted to do it this way uh, to the to the supply chain issue. Uh, this would drag on till well into the summer for waiting for the one in, uh, the one unit, whereas the two smaller units are available now. Uh, to be able to be ordered. Uh, this has also become a little bit of a habitability issue. So it is a smell, but people are complaining of having headaches. We Again, we don't think that it's anything that's actually toxic to them uh, as we've run that down with our environmental consultant. But it, but it is so certainly causing them problems of, and it's, it's caused at least one of those companies to not utilize their office in the mill. So we want to make sure that we get people back in there and paying tenants as, as much as possible and allow them to use the mill and, and hopefully uh, 
get the air clean in there. You guys have seen this, obviously. We did the radon mitigation system, hoping that was powerful enough, and it wasn't. And so this is the next step up, is to get these two units to really turn over the air. And as you recall, the reason why we think this smell is sitting in these two offices in particular is uh, there are walls that go all the way up to the ceiling that prevent the free flow of air, That whereas maybe there's it's throughout the mill, but it's getting dissipated by the open floor plan. These are kind of closed in, so this would help with that. be a landlord, isn't it? Well, uh, of a 120-year-old yeah. building. <laughs> yeah. Character comes at a cost. Yeah. 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 Are there any yeah. questions from the commissioners regarding resolution 22-21? Uh, Based upon everybody, all the professionals involved, this should solve our issue, take care of our tenants make the building habitable and while removing a health risk. This is basically the best possible thing that we can do is, okay. is our understanding from our from our experts. Okay. I'll, I'll make a motion for approval. I'll second that motion. All right, we have a first and a second. Uh, I need a roll call vote, vote please. Jim Cotton, yes. Deborah Meyerson, yes. Randy Cassidy, yes. Cindy Canarni, yes. Resolution 22-21 passes unanimously. Next item of business is resolution 22-22 to approve conveyance agreement for Cottage Grove parcel to a budding landowner. Who would like to speak on behalf of this? I'll start and uh, Mr. Allen may want to chime in and Brent Pierce actually has been a running point. This is uh, uh, to approve the agreement that we have with a resident who is going to be um, acquiring an adjacent parcel <coughs> among the ones that we offered for sale uh, last year along Cottage Grove Avenue. These are the 25 foot parcels and we had a taker on one of them. So that's uh, the summary. Larry, would you add anything there that we need to? No, that's perfect. So this one is directly behind Mr. Flory's uh, property there. Uh, his offer was $100, but that, will, that does not include uh, costs associated with the sale, which is required by statute. Uh, so we're adding those costs as well. Sorry if you said that already. Right, I did not. Okay. Any questions from the commissioners? Not on that particular one, but did we not offer all a lot for sale, several of them for sale? We did, and uh, so the only bids we received on those lots were actually, I, I believe, from Mr. Flory was the only was the only bids that we received, and he he bid on several of them. Uh, we had some concerns about that being that he was not at a budding landowner, except to two potential parcels. Uh, so we said, you know, we'll engage, per the statute actually, we'll engage in negotiations with you where you're an abutting landowner. This is the one we felt most uh, clearly most comfortable with recommending. We are still actually in talks with Mr. Flory. To, there's a, another parcel that he technically abuts or close to abuts that's, that's neighboring. Uh, but we want to make sure there's a church that owns the main parcel above it. And so we have not heard from the church directly other than they, they were not interested in making an offer but we want to make sure that they're comfortable with that before making any recommendations. And so those are those kind of conversations are still ongoing, but this one was the most clear-cut one that's... Okay. And this is excess property that the redevelopment, or the city doesn't feel as though they're going to need in the future for any right-of-ways or... That's correct. So this was obtained in the, uh, I th we believe, in the 1980s, potentially for a, a scheduled project along Cottage Road where this was not needed. And so essentially... The RDC has been holding on to this land. We have given up some of the parcels, so we don't even own the whole strip anymore. Some of those uh, have been donated to Habitat for Humanity, for instance, because it's just the right amount of land that allows these parcels to be subdivided. Oh. So instead of one house, you can get two houses, which is okay. hopefully which the idea here is getting more housing uh, in that area and make it you know, comply with our zoning code. Okay, because yeah, that's very near the trail yep. and such, so that yep. would be been, have been uh, beneficial as we look through for our workforce housing. Yeah. Last question, if we own these pieces, do we have do we maintain them or do we have to maintain them? As opposed to getting rid of them. We, we technically have to maintain them if we own them and that's one of the factors statutorily about offering it for sale is if the cost of maintenance and mowing and everything. Okay. Some of these abutting landowners have been very generous with us okay. in terms of mowing and the church is one of them. I think they've been actively caretaking and mowing that section of it. So. Uh, that, that has been going on, I think, informally for years, different different arrangements for, for different ones. But technically, the RDC would have to foot the bill for mowing. And, and we have paid an entity, as I recall, to mow these these okay. specific parcels up there. So if we can get the adjoining parcels 
owners or someone to go ahead and put them back in to utilization. Yeah. It would be the ideal situation. You're exactly. working on that. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. All right. Yeah, Hutton, I'll second. I have a first and a second. Uh, I need a vote via roll call, please. Deb Hutton, yes. Deborah Meyerson, yes. Randy Cassidy, yes. Cindy Canarney, yes. Resolution 22-22 passes unanimously. Um, on to general discussion. I think uh, we have the deputy mayor here as a, a guest tonight, and I would uh, ask that you step forward, please. I would love to step forward. Can I take one of your mics? Please. All right. Um, David Walters is not here today. Is he, is he watching at all? I, I don't think he is, is he? I don't think so. All right, so hopefully this is recorded. Um, uh, uh, it's a proclamation um, for all his service uh, with the RDC over the years, um, coming from the mayor's office, and I'd like to read it. Um, my, I think I was 24, 25, I was pretty young, uh, the first time I was on the RDC and he was the president and, uh, I learned a lot from him and then when I came back, he helped me through, uh, you know, when I had a little bit more gray on the temple, he helped me, uh, uh, um, just as I, I, I'm sure he's helped other, you know, all of you. Uh, learn how city works and I, I don't know um, but I want to read this and uh, and then I'll let you get on your way if you don't mind uh, you know um, all right this proclamation says whereas nearly 40 years ago David Walter began his role as member of the city of Bloomington Redevelopment Commission and whereas during his tenure the work of the commission expanded to overseeing several programs of the Department of Housing and Neighborhood Development, including the Community Development Block Grant, Neighborhood Improvement Grants, and Tax Increment Districts. And whereas, as a member, David provided thoughtful insight, excellent leadership, and devoted service to this position. And whereas, while David faithfully served on the Bloomington Redevelopment Commission, he assisted with the funding planning and implementation of groundbreaking projects such as the construction of Switchyard Park, the acquisition of Showers Brothers Furniture Factory, and the formation of the Beeline Trail. And whereas through his passion for housing security and preservation, David became a leading voice for housing rehabilitation in Bloomington. And whereas we thank David for his role in providing housing and neighborhood services and celebrate his exceptional commitment and dedication to our community. Now, therefore, I, Don Griffin, for John Hamilton, mayor of the city of Bloomington, do hereby proclaim April 4th, 2022, as David Walter Day. And uh, yeah, we, we love you, David, and thanks for all your service and um, I hope you see this. All right. Thank you. Thank you. That was exceptional. And, and on behalf of the RDC, I want to thank David as well for his guidance and service and dedication. And he certainly helped me. All right. Second that. Yeah. He's been a wonderful advocate. Uh, any other business that we need to discuss tonight? All right, not hearing any, I will entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. All in favor? No second. Aye. Aye. <laughs> All right, good night, everyone.